Good morning again, colleagues. Um, apologies for starting now, only now. Um, just that we had to wait for a few speakers that will be forming part of our program today. Um, my name is Lestela Mutau, and uh, I'm currently situated in CTL, so I'll be um, the program facilitator for today. Um, so as you will have noted in the invitation, um, so we are all aware that this is um, Africa Month, and in doing so, we are celebrating different heritages, different cultures that are existing within the African context. So um, without any waste of time that we already do not have, I will go straight to our program for today, um, which would have our opening and welcome by Mr. Marcus Mapile, um, as you are in the stage, Mr. Mapile. Good morning, colleagues, friends. Uh, we are giving birth to a lot of babies this month, and thank you very much to the Africa Month and the decision taken by the United Nations to dedicate this decade to indigenous languages. And also the constitution of South Africa clearly stipulates that there's 11 languages and they should all be afforded official status. And at the very same time, we are excited that the University of the Free State also st uh, adopted a language policy. That's a, that, that is saying that uh, the right to education should be in the mother tongue or in, one, in, in the official language of choice in all spheres. So we are laying ground to that work um, because I think the language policy is busy uh, establishing uh, platforms and the academy for multilingualism is one of those platforms. So today we are operating under that uh, platform. The platform we actually launched in today, it was initially a library platform uh, because we were laying ground for the establishment of the African Languages Press. But with the understanding that we don't have uh, authors in, in those languages, so we had to come up with an idea to say, uh, let's have a hub that will incubate and assist uh, these uh, writers. We were quite fortunate that at the very same time, because the hub was supposed to be launched maybe probably next year, because they, the focus was supposed to be on the press. But we were fortunate that when Dr. Norma came, we then fast-tracked, because then we, we knew that uh, we will then have support uh, from what we're trying to, 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 to achieve. So uh, we, we, we are here today to give birth to that baby. Uh, the baby will crawl, uh, but we are, we are planting with deep roots, knowing that what we're doing today must never collapse in our watch. So uh, we are quite excited that you are all here to, to actually support us, uh, to ensure that the hub uh, exists and eventually afford space and an opportunity for our students to learn in their own languages. I think that is what is important. Uh, what we'll be doing eventually in the library is to house all this work. Because I think as we um, will be translating and recording some of the modules. Then the library will host some of these resources. So we are quite excited that in this bigger scheme of things, the library is beginning to emerge. And emerging uh, not as a supporter, but as a, as a role player, because uh, we, we, we do have innovation Wednesdays, and I'm, and I'm sure that uh, we'll be having a lot of um, innovations coming to support all the work that we have done in the previous days. So on behalf of the Academy, uh, on behalf of the African Languages Press and the University of the Free State Library, we welcome all of you 
uh, my colleagues, my hardworking director, uh, members of the language policy, and specifically Dr. Nguwan, who's the bride for the, for the day, uh, because we now begin to give a feed so that then her work begin to, to resonate with, with what the university is doing. So the Njadi Bofilwe, there are no dogs roaming around, as you can see. It's a safe space, a beautiful library, uh, under the leadership of my hardworking director, Mem Lopia, who's really pushing us to say that the library is not working alone. We cannot work in silos in our little corners. That time is long past. So that's why we have got so many stakeholders here, uh, so that we showcase what we do, and, and hoping, for, hoping that they will come on board. So on that note, uh, Program Director, thank you very much, and welcome all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mapile. I think he has provided us or given us a, a look as to where are we and what is the need for today and the welcoming and so forth. So, but also it is important to take note of the fact that we are existing in a space, um, or higher education space, which is continually um, changing um, its landscape. And um, that, in that process of changing, Language is part of that, and uh, we can't talk about change if you don't include language. And um, this is not new. It is happening outside of South Africa and elsewhere. So we are trying to locate ourselves within that space of thought and uh, theorization of African languages, but also promoting them to make sense and intellectualizing them. Um, um, without any waste of time, I'll also move to the next item to welcome uh, the director of the Academy for Multilingualism, Dr. Nomangu Bani. Um, uh, good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, all protocol observed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, my name is Noma Lungelungubane. I am the director of the Academy for Multilingualism. Uh, it is my pleasure um, to address you all today. Um, before I speak, program director, I think that it is important that I provide um, some brief background of um, the Academy for Multilingualism so that uh, when people uh, go past the academy, it is a very small building on the other side of the library. It's a beautiful, by the way. Um, so when people go past, they will know what um, the building stands for and what we stand for as the Academy for Multilingualism. But before that, um, I would also like to declare that um, I was born in Durban. I come from Guazulu Natal. Uh, people who have been to Durban, uh, anyone from Durban here? No? Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, if, if, you, um, if you are from um, Deben or if you've been de uh, to Deben, you'll know that we are known for uh, delicious cultural dishes, and one of them is biryani. So in the township, in the township, we just call it biryani. We have the way of making uh, things our own. So um, biryani is one of our very um, rich and cultural dishes. It comes from the Indian cultures, by the way. But if you go to Guazulu Natal, everybody can cook biryani. You go to the townships, you go to the rural side of Guazulu Natal, everybody can cook biryani. Um, so what is important, uh, so you go to the weddings, you go to the graduation parties, the birthday parties, even the funerals, there will be a biryani dish there. So what is important about, um, the, um, about biryani? Uh, biryani is a, a combination of um, um, a variety of spices, um, a variety of herbs, rice, meat, eggs, vegetables, uh, but um, uh, uh, the key to the very um, to a very tasty biryani is in this beautiful combination coming together of these different ingredients, such that they they make this highly tasty um, uh, cultural dish. Um, it's also in the in the in their melting together to, uh, into one another. 
So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, why am I using this analogy of Briani to speak about um, the academy for multilingualism? I'm trying to arrive at a, a definition of what is multilingualism and what is a multilingual university. So currently there is no precise definition of what is, um, what is multilingualism. But uh, in general, when we speak of multilingualism, we refer to um, uh, the capacity on an on act of um, using more than one languages uh, to engage or to communicate in different contexts uh, and for different purposes. So my, myself, I use the analogy of Priyani uh, to define um, multilingualism um, as the coexistence of um, diverse languages in the multilingual's mind. Um, um, such that um, it affords a multilingual an opportunity uh, of throwing from all the languages that exist in their minds um, at any given point, at any given context, uh, to perform various functions. So what is a multilingual university? So I do not have a definition for that, but I borrow from um, famous uh, scholars of multilingualism, such as uh, Professor Matiba, such as Professor Makalela, and Professor Van der Waal. Um, they all define a multilingual university as, uh, the one in, as the one in which students, using uh, the languages that they know and those that are, they are getting to know, to, um, uh, that, uh, and then they are enabled uh, to succeed. So ladies and gentlemen, with that background, uh, the Academy for Multilingualism, which flows from our multilingual language policy, uh, it seeks to express uh, the university, uh, our university's commitment to multilingualism uh, with particular emphasis on Sesotho, Africans, and the Sisulu. Um, and how will the Academy achieve that uh, mandate of promoting multilingualism. So we are going to do that through um, a number of initiatives. And uh, Mr. Mapila has already uh, identified some of those initiatives. Uh, one of them is the development of multilingual subject specific glossaries or terminology. So um, the purpose of that is to provide op um, um, opportunities for students who come from the background other than English to engage with their concepts or disciplinary con uh, concepts in their mother tongue. So that it's, we hope that it will accelerate deeper understanding of the concept because they are competent in their mother tongue even though they are not competent in English at all. So in that way, we, we think that um, they're able to, um, to, access, um, to, to succeed, actually. Um, um, so uh, with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, there is a need to focus um, on, the, um, on the nurturing of the skills um, that will assist us in achieving that uh, mandate. Uh, when we talk about the skills, we talk about um, the interpreters, we talk about uh, the translators, we talk about the lexicographists, we talk about the terminologists, we talk about all those people that will assist us uh, in doing that. Hence, today we are launching the Multilingual Hub. So as the academy, we are not only go, uh, focusing on the development of the terminology, we will also produce a multilingual voiceovers uh, that will allow students to attend their English-only medium um, lectures, but later they will be uh, able to also um, um, attend um, the very same uh, lecture in their preferred language. So for this project, the academy will need a large pool of voiceover artists. And uh, that is not a small task, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we will we'll need to uh, recruit voiceover uh, or artists across the different languages, which is Sesotho, Africans, and, and Isizulu. Um, so the, the hub, um, the, the academy, in collaboration with the library, has a big mandate of training the people, preferably our own students, so that we also provide uh, job opportunities for them. We are going to train them as voiceover artists um, to, um, to interpret and also um, and to translate uh, the materials into different languages as well as into our sign language. Um, um, I'll go over quickly what Mr. Mapila has already said. Uh, we are, as the academy, we are also expected to advance the development of indigenous languages uh, through the pu uh, publication of literature in our indigenous languages as well as research written in indigenous languages. So uh, on Thursday, uh, together with the library, we launched um, uh, um, uh, the Ac um, African Languages Press, uh, which will publish literature and research uh, in our own languages. And we do acknowledge that um, uh, the aspiring authors uh, will need capacitation, will need mentorship, will need guidance to shape their writing, and also to produce the high quality uh, manuscripts, the, uh, the hub, 
will provide such support uh, in the form of workshop and writing retreats. Um, the hub will not be limiting the services to the multilingual glossaries, the voiceovers, and the language, African languages press. Uh, together with the library, uh, which is our uh, primary partners and stakeholders um, in, the, in, in achieving this mandate, we aim to rise to become the providers of the multilingual services across the university so that we respond to our multilingual needs uh, of our university. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the library, especially the director of the library, for joining hands with the academy in the promotion of the multilingualism through the multilingual hub. We cannot do this successfully without your support, and uh, we cannot do this successfully without the support of the African languages. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maleta. We cannot do this without uh, our units of lexicography, our colleagues from the PENSAP, our colleagues from the national language offices. Uh, uh, in closing, I would like to remind all of us um, here today that um, our languages have suffered uh, marginalization, uh, they've suffered oppression, they've suffered underdevelopment and disrespect during, uh, during the colonial times and uh, throughout the apartheid era. Um, so it is our time and our responsibility to develop and promote and preserve our languages. We cannot expect other people to do this for us. It is time that to advance our languages. And the right time is now, ladies and gentlemen. The right time is the multilingual hub. And the right people are, is the all of us. Let us be agents of change. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nama, for that, um, uh, for, that uh, for delivering that item. I think we now have a better picture. We're gaining a better understanding of why we are here today. And uh, with that, in effect, in fact, in mind, um, it is indeed correct that uh, we are existing in a very uh, diverse space. Um, I'll keep on talking about space, especially looking in terms of where we are. So this is not new, like I said. Um, it exists elsewhere in Germany, in European countries, in Asia, these things exist. Um, but the question is, how far are we in the global south? Okay, so that's what we are grappling with at the moment. Um, so um, I think she has also touched on the issue of the development of languages. It depends on uh, where you are coming from and how do you see language and uh, the issue of the contention of multilingualism as a concept. And how do you see it from where you are coming or from the worldview that you are advancing? So that is important. In whatever work that will be, the African language press will be doing or the multilingualism hub will be doing. So it will be engaging with those different worldviews in order to make sense of um, that Briani spy so that we have um, a very delicious plate at the end of the day. Um, so also, we have these programs or centers in other universities in South Africa. Um, you have, at WITS, you have the hub, the hub, the hub for multilingual um, education and literacy. So at the Western Cape, University of the Western Cape, you have um, Center for Multilingualism and Diversity Research. So there's a lot. Um, and these are the programs that are centers that are emerging at the current sp space and time because of the conception of multilingualism. We're trying to find a tune as to what is it that we are battling with or grappling with. Um, so without any waste of time, I'll move to the next um, item. Um, which would we'll give out to Dr. Malete um, to give us a message of support from the African Language Department. Thank you, uh, Program Director. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor for me today to say a message of support for the establish establishment of the, um, the hub. Um, last week, we also launched um, the African Language Express. For me, they work, they go hand in hand. Let me just say, uh, we are very pleased as the Department of African Languages that uh, what at one stage Professor Stradon uh, alluded to during one of the language committee meetings to say, it is not only solely the Department of African Languages that has to see to it that 
the indigenous languages it, it, and at this university are developed. It is everybody. So we are happy that the library is on board. Uh, the academy is there. And I think the Department of African Languages, as the custodian of the uh, Sesutan Isizul currently, will also have to play a part. Let me say, um, if you look at uh, the history where we come from, uh, it is important to also to acknowledge what has been done. If you remember, uh, with the arrival of the uh, missionaries, we, uh, the African languages were able to be codified. We are able to write now to read because of the uh, uh, contribution. We acknowledge that. And there was also a time when uh, the, the government at that time was saying, let us also introduce the uh, indigenous languages into our curriculum. I remember at that time I was doing Standard 4 and I was um, studying health, uh, having the textbooks written in Sisut. I don't know what happened. But eventually, then I think in 1974, uh, we resorted back to Africans. I know I did Africans, health, health in Africans for a year. In 1995, then we went back to English. And at that time, uh, Standard 6 was scrapped, and then from Standard 5, you then went to high school. One of the um, experts also said, you know, the, the process of colonization should also be looked at both sides. While there are negatives, but there was also a willingness of the African people also to adapt some of the things. Uh, I can't pronounce that name, but I have that, the name of that person who said that, and I agree with that. But if you look at the ministerial report again, while we trace back how the African languages uh, have developed or probably have suffered marginalization, but the ministerial report also acknowledges the fact that we can't do away with the progress that has been made up to so far. It means we have to meet halfway so that uh, what has been done uh, uh, probably with the marginalization of the African languages has to be uh, or, or has to be acknowledged let me say that now if you look at the development of the language policy we could see that 20, uh, the, two, the 2002 language policy covered uh, the, the fears of the marginalization of Africans. Then there was the 2016 um, language policy that also realized the fact that the language policy does not say much about the development of the African languages. And if you look at the 2020 uh, current language policy, uh, Africans have been recognized as one of the indigenous languages. And there are two things that are highlighted by the current uh, the 2020 language policy. There are two. The first one, it is the promotion of multilingualism in collaboration, in partnerships. It is not only uh, the, the, the multilingualism, but all the universities, all the stakeholders must come together to promote that. And the second one, it is to bring back the dignity of the African languages by recognizing the, the uh, uh, academic uh, knowledge that it is embedded in them. And we can only do that through what um, the previous speakers have mentioned. Now, if we look at the University of the Free State language policy, um, it recognizes English as the medium of instruction but what is important, it, is also, uh, it also recognizes um, Africans that it should also be, not be marginalized, but to be, uh, also be uh, assisted in, the, in its development because it has already uh, made a great, uh, uh, I would say, covered a lot in terms of development. But it also emphasizes the development of Sesotho and Isizu. Those are the four languages that are recognized by the policy 
of this university. But what is important is to find out whether we have implemented some of the things that are entailed within the language policy. How far have we gone as the university? Yes, we have done a little bit. The first thing that I think the university have done up to so far in achieving, it is to establish their language, their multilingual academy. Without it, uh, then we would just be singing uh, a song that would never, we, we would never be able to dance to. Secondly, we have also established, uh, but this also comes from the Department, the Department of Higher Education, whereby the multilingual uh, uh, process has been enforced, especially in the education faculty. So we have the conversational modules. Uh, we have um, the foundation teachers that are trained, they have to teach in the indigenous languages. That is important for us. And I'm happy that the Department of uh, Basic Education is uh, considering taking that further, probably maybe to grade six. That will help us a great deal. But we have also, there are a lot of uh, um, things that we have done in terms of the implementation. Uh, the conversational modules are now found across the faculties. They, have now, they are now appearing in the natural sciences. We now have the conversational modules at the Faculty of Law and the Faculty of Theology as well. They also have the conversational modules. Uh, we are only left with uh, health sciences and um, economics and management sciences. The health sciences, they, they already, long time ago, had a, a program which is, was online, embedded in one of the modules there for the uh, learning of Sesotho if you are um, a, a non Sesotho speaker. Now, there's, you can see that the, we, the university has gone a little bit far in terms of the implementation of the multilingual pro, uh, program. Um, there is also a project by the ICANN, because what is important, it is uh, to have the literature written by our own uh, students, the youth, in their own languages. And I think at this, uh, until this stage, we have two publications where we have the essays and that were written by our own students, where we can learn about their own experiences. But what is important also, I've been talking with the Dame Mapile, it is also to identify the learning spaces in the student residences, whereby we can take the stories and have discussions about them to just encourage the use of the, of the indigenous languages around campus. If we can succeed in that then, so that uh, we, our students, the community, the society will be able to, uh, you know, uh, practice what you call um, tolerance. The, the mere fact that we can't debate anymore, we can't talk about, this, the, you know, if you know the language of another person, you know their culture thereof. I serve in the community that is called the COPAL, the Community of Practice uh, for the African Languages, uh, that the Professor Madiba was the head of. So the second option, a part of the language committee, language policy, it is the development of the language beside multilingualism. How far are we in terms of the closure building? I know there are various departments, maybe we have to make an audit to see how many departments are doing this uh, terminology building. I know we have the lexicographic unit. Uh, according to Dr. Ngubani, there will be about seven uh, subjects that will also be translated. Their, their uh, terminology will be translated into African language. That will be a great deal, really. So having look in, uh, looked at the development up to so far, we really appreciate the establishment of the hub. Currently what we are running short of, we have been looking, talking about the translation of the abstracts of the masters and PhDs uh, thesis and dissertations. And we need uh, the personnel there, who, the language practitioners, who will be able to translate or to help in the editing of the, uh, the abstracts. 
for us, the, the translation of the abstracts will be um, an, a, a prestige, uh, a, you know, a gesture that we recognize uh, the other languages other than English. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can be together uh, in trying to uh, bring everybody uh, to the platform where we can allow these languages to play a part, we will really also reconcile. It is only through the language and knowing other persons' language that we can come together as the university population and community. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Malite, for that. I think that was quite in loaded. Um, we'll have to, while you are sitting at home, think about it deeply, um, especially with uh, the socio-historical period um, that we have went through. And um, of course, in keeping in mind that um, what is the journey that we have to walk. And if that journey needs all of us, it has to be all of us that we have to walk that journey. And um, I think he has touched the earth to say um, the language policy, language policy framework for higher education for 2002 has mentioned a lot of discrepancies in terms of the progress and the development of or the enhancement of the indigenous languages. And if you read that carefully, you'll notice that these are some of the legacies or the remnants of colonialism and also apartheid that are still in existence in a post-apartheid South Africa. So there's a long journey that needs to be traveled or to traverse. And in doing that, we need everyone or there's a need for everyone to be part of that. And um, moving to that 10 years after that, there's a um, language policy framework for education that was published in 2020. Um, that also speaks about the section 29 of the constitution, which speaks about the accessibility of knowledge or education in terms of indigenous languages. Of course, we have seen a whole lot of debate around what is reasonably practical, okay? Um, so you have that part or caveat within the constitution that speaks about what is reasonably practical. When you say you want to implement something, but you put bureaucracies within that process of implementation. So that, those are some of the discussion that are very important to take note of. And uh, these are such, of the, such units and um, centers that are widely needed within higher education space so that we can advance the thinking and the theorization, like I said, in terms of how do we understand ourselves within a language? Because language itself is a contested terrain. Someone was saying that language is an invented phenomenon. You know, it doesn't exist. Or someone would say that language it's, 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 and culture are inseparable. So those are some of the questions that we need to, we are grappling with in understanding or trying to make sure that the template that we use to frame multilingualism, especially in education, is in line with or is informed by the socio-cultural histories that we have, the stories that we need to tell, Projects such as I can help us to understand the worldviews of the students because they have their own worldviews. And in that, we need to make sure that that happens, happens making sure that we work together in that process. So I will hand over to, um, would have um, a student who will recite a poet for us, a poem for us, Mudiehi um, Motseko. Over to you, Mudiehi. If I was a queen, I would say my people. If I was a president, I would say my nation. Because I'm none of those executives. Allow me to call you mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. Kikota tabataka patan chocho. Kikene tabeng kikwele hudika dika hubani mi dikong haki sofi. Kikale pilu ya kai laba labe labo tapi babo tretsek. Itswe musebe tsiketsa o mahet. Kiahela kei kamela nakabuna impa haki mo kitawe nyen. Mo Afrika papam. 
mamelen ka tsalona tse le thwethwe di tsebe lenke di thutswana le fate di konokono ho tsalona di tsebe le mamele le nkutlwe hakere qaqa ama pedi ama raru mantswi ke ina ntlhatsa ka tsa menwana ha ke na ya lololo itswe ke tla ba mogutswane jwalo ka saka siem kalaka le le me kere mo afrika papama di khantse ka po ya ha henu mo afrika papama u boe ya ha henu puwe o nanate peta ke tsa la heno le leme e tsa le leme la heno le mathe malodi ke tshaela ona mo hopola monwana ho ba le le rona le ya ikutlwela hore ho ya he supuo ke thella fela le wena e khantse e konke ka ya heno puo ka la ka le leme ke re mo afrika papama le moha hore dipo dingata maleme a mangata e bile a ka fetolela merabeng ye mengata go tlontsene tsa lefatshe ka mona le ka ntlena o tlwa ka mo Afrika re ka etsa motswako ra kopanya dipuo di le ka o fela ho etsa polelo e le ngwe ngwana wa mala wa sipilo have ikesha lokufunda dipo tsedi ba yesu ke re ka kopana ka kopanelo i ya rona re ka yetsa ntho ya rona mbo ona motswako i khile o monate ho ona motswako mo khaketsi a tla khaketse ka bogheleke a ithute po i yengwe mm motswako ala ka le le me ke re mo afrika papama le ba la situmo o ipotse o mang ke mo fukeng wa tsela tsela wa malokotwane ngwana matsela no ka ditletse mo afrika she ipotse hore o mang tseba mo tswanteng ho ba ne ha o sa tsebe mo tswanteng o ke ke ba wa tseba mo yanteng o ka tsama ya o ntse o qhiletsa o sabonetsela o phopholetsa e be o tshewa ke ba ri chaba o ba motlai he he ha kalaka le le me ke re mo afrika papama ke re mo afrika papama o be bo hlale jolo ka kokonyana bohlwa kokonyana ya ho tsiparela ha ntle botshabeng ba yona kokonyana ya ho sithunthetswe ke botshaba botswang ka mahlakore kokonyana ya ho tseparela ha ntle botshabeng ba yona ke re le wena mo afrika tseparela e matahanye le ba heno botshaba o bone hore o motlejwa mo afrika papama mo afrika papama o le bo o le mohe botle ba hao mo afrika phela se afrika hata menya buketsong ya mo afrika o afare se afrika o je mejo ya mo afrika helang wi papatse ka bo khabane o tsike mo tsiko wa mo afrika afrika borwa e ke khabe kana lewe mo afrika papama ke a le bo let's give a round of applause again chris uh, that is brilliant that was brilliant um so this is what we call you know you're trying to um 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 have access to knowledge and if you don't have access to knowledge then it means you won't have access to knowledge if you don't have the language or if you don't know the language you'll not understand what what is the meaning of that but in a nutshell i think the poem is about the the i heard that africa mo africa papamets means africa rise up or wake up um, and celebrate your diversity that it's beautiful you're not you don't you don't need to do, to 
to, 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 to take it away from you or alienate yourself from who you are. Um, and I think, thank you for that, um, DA. I think that was a good um, um, recitation, really. Um, without any waste of time, I think we would then move to the next item where we would have the message of support, again, from um, uh, Matt Janet Amlopiani uh, from the library. Um, round of applause, please, colleagues. We'll see if, if, if you'll be able to match what just happened now. Uh, Dr. Ngubani, congratulations. Congratulations on this very special day. How's my dear? Nagi mokwen. Nagi wanya na mokwen. Kimo tswana. Hey, kimo lo piana ramule wa kito. Hey, so ito utsebu menu. That's who I call myself. Kimo lo piana ramule wa kito. So, Dr. Nguban, Dr. Malit, I see. Men Nikki Ways here today, this is a big moment. This is a big moment where now we are saying the foundation was destroyed by colonizers. We are not using those old bricks to rebuild. We are taking new bricks, our real African bricks, to build that foundation. And, and we are going to take it piece by piece. And we are not going to beat our head against the wall if things do not go according to how we are envisaging. But we will make it. We will definitely make it. We will see content books written in Sesotho. Thank you, Dr. Malete, for highlighting to us that there are uh, lexicography divisions where they are developing the jargon, you know, the terminology, you know, etymology, you know, development of new words in, in our African languages in that way we are going to realize our dream. And we need to support that uh, uh, divisions. I think maybe if we meet, we'll be able to, you know, to go a, a bit further. As, as. But from the library, we are so excited. We are so excited and we are very happy for you, uh, Dr. Ngubani. Um, our plans in this project include the podcast studio in the library. I said to Marcus and, 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 and Metzolo, and, and the, the, the media team, we need a podcast studio in the library where we will showcase this to the world. And we also involved the SRC so that we touch the young ones. I'm surprised that there are young children who can still speak Susoto. Nowadays, you see parents that say, no, we want them to fit in. You don't have to fit in, you have to stand out and be an African and be an African child. This thing of us, it, it, it seems like now we are so into colonization that you know we have want to conform to colonial ways. No, they need to speak English. My, my grandchild is at crash. Now they said to my daughter, speak English in the house. I said, no ways. I speak enough English at work. Enough English at work. I'm writing in English in the house. Sosoto. If they say, Jeanette, translate your annual report in Sosoto, I will definitely do that and present it to the library, uh, to the university uh, management. This is the birth of a great child, like Marcus has indicated earlier on that, you know, we are going to nurture that baby. We are going to breastfeed that baby. Together we're going to give food and nourish. We are going to give that child so that our African child can be well nourished. Our, our, our hub, our university hub, as we embrace it. And, and, and with, with the collaboration from the Department of uh, African Languages and the library where we will go to the world there and make it shine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mem Lopwani, for that. I think uh, you, you are almost there. Almost. Almost there. But it's okay. We'll have another event of this nature. Um, so, colleagues, uh, I think that, that, that we can also hear that there's a lot of support that is coming out from other different departments, which is quite important. 
because it cannot be that um, a sole mandate of a, a particular or academy alone, uh, which is um, um, for, for languages to develop, it takes a whole lot of community uh, to make sure that they are they, they see the light of the day. Um, I think some of you have noted, if you know, that at the moment we have only 2% of books in South Africa, even in the world, are written in indigenous languages. Only 2%. And the question is, what is happening with the 98%? Okay? So then what needs to happen? Because that also evades us from getting access to different knowledges and different understanding of how do you think about what you think? And how do you come to think? Can you think in English? Can you think in Isizulu or Afrikaans or, or Sesotho? We need to tap into that and understand really who are we within this diverse space of higher education. So um, without any waste of time, I know it started late, but I'm happy that everyone seems to be now becoming part of the event. Um, so I will hand over to... Um, uh, Prof. Uh, Pindani Pule from C C Central University of Technology, CUT, um, uh, to give us also a message of support. Dumela. Dumela. Moluin. Good morning, uh, Program Director. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity. But more thanks should be given to Dr. Ngubani for inviting me in this uh, occasion. Mine is just to give a brief uh, message of support about this uh, hub. In most cases, you will find the replica in each and every university's language units. Can you underline? Language units. But this hub itself, it distinguishes itself from units because specifically it has a mandate, which is multilingualism, which is diversity, which is transformation. Actually, it happens in 2000, 2003 about our country after they have adopted the language uh, policy. Then they spoke about the implementation of the language policy, that each and every institution need to have a language unit. Now the question is, what is happening in those units? Are we just writing whatever we want to write? But there was no mandate for multilingualism. One, one thing for sure, if you look at our research, there's a lot that can assist this hub. I was referring to the language policy. Each and every institution of higher learning need to have a language unit. Of most of them, they do have language units, but the mandate is not there. Even the language policy itself from the South African language policy doesn't say much. How do we redress the past? It doesn't. In other words, they are taking the very same ruler and measuring each and every language with the same measuring units, which is not the case. So I'm glad the University of uh, Free State has been given a mandate that is multilingualism. If I can go as far as what is expected from us as the hub, we need to go and look at other universities, what they did. Other universities, they harvest a number of uh, uh, what do they call it? The detailizan can you assist? They have harvest a number of terminology so that they develop it, put it into uh, uh, indigenous or African languages. I can state one of them, one of the, the, the most prestigious universities, University of Stellenbosch. They did a lot. I can tell you there is a close array of the Department of uh, Humanities in terms of exchanging languages, in terms of exchanging messages, the language, the, the message has been put in English, in Africans and Estrosa. So everyone has been touched. But the same institution, they come from the language unit. When you look at the development of both languages, Africans become tops. 
because the mandate doesn't say anything about multilingualism. If you go as well as the University of UNISA, there was a project that started in 20, 2020 until 2021, and it's working quite well. That's why I'm saying research is part of us. In order for this hub to work quite well, we need to be engaged in the research. UNISA says, said, we have manuals, we have study modules that we need to implement in all our students, even though it's a, 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 a distant learning institution in most cases. But now, according to the research, they also found that most of their students uh, struggles in terms of the language. Then they do a research and put it in an online information that how about we convert, even if they are not converting, how about the versioning? All the modules, theology modules, uh, what is the other one? Uh, the one that, the one that I, I, I'm not forgetting. That's education modules is also part of them. The philosophical, I'm not quite sure about that one. But most of their modules has been versioned into 12, I mean 11 indigenous languages. Sisoto, Sitswana, Sipedi, Sitlosa, Chivenda, Chitonga, all of them, they've been versioned. You know what I, why, why I'm saying the research does assist? The feedback that comes from the students in terms of the, 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 the modules that has been versioned is so amazing to such an extent that now the university has taken a stand that each and every module irrespective of the depart I mean, faculty of humanities, they are going to be versioned. So that's how research assists us. We need to go around the University of Free State and look to or open a small onion online uh, questionnaire, both for a student as well as the, 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 the employee, as to how do they think this hub will assist us. Okay, now let's get to CUT where I come from. The, the, the CUT in the Faculty of Engineering has decided that all the learning materials, glossaries, need to be versioned into African language, which is Sesotho. I can tell you it's worked quite well. Students are so happy that at least they can turn around the book and look at the back if they answer the questions. There was one of the, the, the research that we, we instituted in our uh, CUT. We took a, a biology question paper. And as it is, we put to the students, we demarcate them. And then we took another a biology question paper with African languages questions on it and said, let's sit down and write. Guess what? The results for both who wrote in English biology question paper as well as those who wrote in a uh, biology question paper with English and Sesotho. It goes without saying that those who have a chance of answering or not answering as such, of reading the question paper, the questions in their own mother tongue, did quite well as compared to those that even though they were not taught in their African languages, but the mere fact that there is an understanding as to me. I can respond with your own language, but the first thing is if I comprehend your language, I can also respond in your language. That is the most important striking question. So, Sisin Gubani, Doc, uh, what I, I wanted you to say is that you have done a very good, uh, I mean, good work for converging us here. And I think this, this sub is going to work quite well. We can go as far as go looking at the University of KwaZulu Natal. Currently, for the first years, they've been taught in their own mother tongue, in some department, in the Department of Education. They have been taught in their own mother, mother tongue, the, 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 I mean, the, the first, first years. So I think this hub will also assist us in order to achieve those kind of uh, milestones. Uh, let me quickly end my, my presentation by looking at the men who have been part of, uh, who have been 
uh, stood the test of time, the late Dr. Nelson Mandela. He said, if you speak with someone, with, with a man, with the language that he understands, you go straight to his mind, straight to his mind. But if you speak to someone with his language, it goes straight to his heart. So that's all I call a diversity in order to aspire that excellency, that transform, transformation, we need also to put in some sort of diversity. And diversity, what it, it, it carries, it carries within itself a sense of belonging, a sense of un understanding someone. So you, you, you see, if like uh, Dr. Malete have already alluded that, we need to have those kind of debates in our hostels. Because if you put me, say I'm a Sutu speaker, I came here as a first year and put me with an African speaker. Hey, I'm a little bit worried because that's where we need to indulge that diversity at a younger or early stages. If you put me with a closer speaker, being a Sotho, hey, I'm a little bit worried. How am I going to communicate with this person? With these few words, I would like to say that SUT, we don't have the hub, mal, 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 uh, multilingual hub, but we do have the language units, like I said. But we want to say to uh, University of Free State, we are behind you and we are always, already near you to assist with ever we can assist. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof Pindani, um, uh, for, for the warm words really, especially coming from CUT. Um, I think it's, it's well taken, noted off. Um, so you'll see we'll have a message of support without wasting any time um, from Pensalp. Um, so I don't know the official who's here to speak on behalf of Pensalp. Okay, thank you. As you were going to stay. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Ladies and gentlemen, students, um, I greet you all. Um, when you said pencil, I'm like, really? <laughs> I do. I was not aware that I was on the program. Uh, nonetheless, thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Niki Wema Tebula, Africa Borwa, the Pen South African Language Board. We have our office here in Bloemfontein, and we sincerely support the promotion of multilingualism. We are very proud of the establishment of this hub. And um, my sincere hope uh, working for the Language Board is that I hope we can really see a multilingual university. It's long overdue. Uh, we have been waiting for it for a long time. I was a student here at the university. I studied Sisutu here from uh, first year to third year. I did South African Sign Language. Uh, English and Africans as well. So I hope we can take it further where we can see it. Everyone can see it. It cannot just be as a subject. It cannot just be written on a document some way. But when we have this hub that we can see these languages being established, these languages being developed, these languages being used as being tolerant of each other and trying to understand where each of us is coming from. That is the issue of diversity and social cohesion. So with those few words, I would like to congratulate um, them, uh, Dr. Ngubani and the hub. Uh, you've got a, <laughs> a long road ahead of you, a lot of work to be done, but I believe it can be achieved. We've got bright students, we've got staff members, we've got librarians, we've got um, support from Wombe, Jeanette, and Datemakas, my pillar, et cetera. So with those few words, I say from the Penn South African Language Board, you have our support. You know we'll attend to all your needs if you need us. And obviously, we're also going to monitor the progress that you are making. Thank you very much. Gallevo. Um, thank you very much, Miniki uh, Matibula. Um, I think we, we are almost, we are getting there in terms of time. We are getting there. But while we are getting there, um, I think there, was very, there were very important speakers before. And... Um, before I will go to the next item, um, it is also important that we, we reflect also when we leave this, this venue um, as, as humans so that we get to understand really um, uh, who are we or who we are, um, no matter how you want to phrase it, but making sure that we understand or find ourselves 
within a space of higher education. So um, without wasting time, I would give or hand over to Mr. Tello Telezani to do or give us uh, an item on a uh, vote of thanks. Over to you, Nate. Thank you very much, Program Director. All protocols observed. My name is Delo Telezani. I'm the acting editor-in-chief and executive director of Sisusa Soto National Lexicography Unit. Academy of Multilingualism family would like to congratulate you and wish you well on your significant initiative of launching a multilingual hub. As a lexicography unit, we would like to inform you that we are highly prepared to collaborate with you to ensure that our languages are elevated and intellectualized in a proper manner. And we are also hoping that this mammoth task will not be a platform which is going to be utilized to dehumanize ourselves, to criticize our cultural diversity, our gender differences, our heritage, our ideologies, and not forgetting our different melodious languages. In this hub, our unemployed graduates will be capacitated without any doubt, with various skills, which are language practice and language studies related and ICT. Interpreters, translators, editors, terminographers, this hub is specially designed for you. Take good care of it and take good care of our languages and respect them, please. We are looking forward to work with you on different terminological and lexicographic related projects. We will be compiling closeries of different subjects fields like chemistry. We did that with CUT. We compiled engineering terminology. We compiled biomedical terminology. So with UOFs, we are going to do the very same thing even more. Psychology will be translated. Sports sciences, law-related subjects, economic, actual science, and others will be translated in our languages. When I'm referring to our languages, I'm not only referring to Sesotho, I'm also referring to Isizulu, and then also Africans because, you know, we, we need each other and we need to work as a team because if you look at it, if you look at things very well, uh, some of the terms which we are using as Basotho, they originally derived from Africans. So we need to take good care of all these languages and respect each other and respect our diversity. This task will lay a proper foundation and a constant working relationship which will prove beyond doubt that we share one of the most pivotal instrument of communication, which is the language. With those words, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Ngobani and your team, and wish you well in everything and the library and the university in totality We'd like to thank you for this opportunity, and we are hoping that the hub will serve its purpose. Our unemployed graduates will be employed. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Uh, Tello. Uh, I think thank you very much for that. I think we have um, the program was supposed to end at. 12.30, we started a bit late, but we finished on time. That needs to be noted. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, in closing, colleagues, uh, thank you everyone for attending today. I think it was a very special event to note that the support is there and the work that needs to be done is a lot. And uh, we are interestingly looking forward to uh, these big projects that are taking place within um, the University of the Free State, which, of course, uh, we are hoping that it will set a standard 
to other universities and other universities will come here to benchmark not only universities in South Africa in South Africa, but other universities outside of South Africa, um, because this thing of language or the language issue or multilingualism is quite complex for everyone. So the University of the State will have the opportunity to set a standard to the world on how do you ensure that you advance and how do you ensure that students, staff, and everyone within uh, who forms part of the community of the university um, it feels welcome and not alienated within the system. So with that, I thank you very much, for everyone, for coming, and we hope that you have a wonderful day ahead. Thanks.